The Building Industry and Land Development Association recently released the 2019 figures on new home sales in the Greater Toronto Area. For condominiums, there were just under 27,000 units sold in 2019, up 27% from 2018, and 16% above their 10 years average. For single-family homes, the crash in 2018 is still fresh in our minds, and that was actually the lowest year in new home sales since 1981. So, how did we do in 2019? There were 9,523 new home sales, up 157% from 2018. But the number was actually still 30% below the 10-year average. Let's take a look at the pricing. Last December, the benchmark price for new condos went above $910,000. That was 15% increase over the past year. The benchmark price for single-family homes was just under $1.1 million. That was actually down 4.8% over the past year. You see, the price gap between the high-rise and low-rise homes is really shrinking, with both hovering around the million dollars mark. Low-rise sounds like a bargain, but why was the sales number still 30% below the 10-year average? Do you think more people will start shifting back to low rise in the next few years? Only 690 people per year have the opportunity to invest in this secret golden district in central downtown Toronto. Discover the unique opportunity to invest with the number one builder in Toronto, the most attractive downtown project at the most affordable prices, 55 Mercer condos. Get your unit now. Click the link in the description. In this coming decade, we are going to unfold into area of electric vehicles, artificial intelligence, advanced robotics, and driverless everything. It promises to be a decade of disruptive changes. While there are many exciting changes to talk about, we are going to focus on demographics in this episode. In this decade, we are going to welcome 1 million new people to Greater Toronto. By 2030, the population of the Toronto area will hit 8 million. There are three main groups of people that we should pay special attention to. Number one, the baby boomers. The baby boomers represent an oversized population that grew up on their beetles. During that period, women had an average of 3.7 kids. By 2030, the baby boomers will be 65 and older. Ultimately, by 2046, Ontario will have almost twice as many seniors as it has today. They will make up around 23.4% of population. That is a significant quarter. The baby boomers are going to have to downsize. They will look for smaller units with maximum livability, walkability, accessibility, and transit options. Number two, the millennials, people who are around 24 to 39 years old. They represent the largest living generation and the most highly educated in Canada's history. The living style is going to have a direct impact on the real estate market. They hate to commute. Wasting two hours commuting back and forth Markham and downtown no way. They like to stay where the action is. Why live away from work, restaurants, and entertainment? They do not view owning a car as a ticket to freedom like the baby boomers did. And by 2030, on-demand car sharing and services like Uber will have fully flourished. The cars will probably be driverless by then. So here's the thing. The baby boomers will say, Time is money. The millennials say, time is much more valuable than money. Indeed, money you can always make again, but time you can never buy more. That's why millennials place a very high priority on experiences. They would rather spend their spare time on what they want to do instead of mowing the lawn, shoveling snow, cleaning the big house, 
fixing this and that. They would rather spend money traveling around the world instead of buying material things. Number three, the immigrants. Immigrants today make up 65% of Canada's net annual population growth. By 2035, almost 100% of Canada's net population growth will be through immigration. By that time, nearly half of Canada's population will be first or second generation immigrants. The immigrant population will continue to be concentrated in metropolitan areas like Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. When new immigrants arrive in new city, they are going to stay where the jobs are, where the amenities are, where the actions are. They are unlikely to stay far out in the suburbs if they don't know anybody. So let's go back to our original question. Do you think the Schengen price gap will cause a significant shift back to the low-rise market? I think the Schengen gap will drive more sales in low-rise in the short term. But in the long run, based on demographic shift we just discussed, I would say condo living will remain the trend in this coming decade. If you want to stay on top of the market, make sure you click the subscribe button below and hit the bell so you won't miss my future videos. So go ahead and subscribe now.